This is my brand new all AMD 4K gaming and streaming rig. Let's talk about it. Starting off with the CPU and the GPU. So this PC has two 7900s, a 7900 Ryzen CPU and a 7900 XT GPU. And the reason I chose them was pretty simple. AMD is kind of killing it in terms of parts that are suitable for small form factor ITX rigs right now. The 7900 non-X is extremely efficient and from many benchmarks online, it's just thermally very, very good. Also, AMD was willing to send over a 7900, so I'll just take what I could get. It's also pretty good value if you see the pricing, considering it has very similar performance to its bigger 7900X brother, but it's also quite a bit cheaper. As for the 7900 XT, that was from a sponsored Aftershock rig that I got like last month, and this rig is actually replacing that sponsored rig because the perpetual never-ending desire to upgrade is something that I have. But the 7900 XT is absolutely overkill, but also perfect for this rig. It's overkill because I only really play Valorant and I don't need something that this powerful for gaming and streaming, but it does allow me to do 4K gaming, which is great if I ever want to do some fancy 4K rasterization gaming, though I find it unlikely since I probably won't have that much time in university to game. It is also a really powerful GPU, so if I do decide to use this ITX PC to do some video editing in DaVinci Resolve, I would have no issues with this CPU and GPU combination. There's a big advantage of going with AMD AMD for CPU and GPU, because AMD Smart Access Memory allows the CPU and GPU to share RAM, meaning it can run in a more optimal fashion with lower latency and better performance. And turning on smart access memory seems to improve performance by about 10 to 20% in a game like Valorant, which is very CPU intensive. So that's nice to see. As for RAM though, I went with a 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR5. It's 5200 megahertz. And the reason I chose it was number one, it was low profile. And number two was the cheapest set of RAM I could get my hands on in a hurry. I didn't really bother too much about getting fancy, fancy RAM because to be honest, I don't need it. And I think this rig is pretty over kill to begin with so getting a super fast RAM isn't going to be super important to me and not worth the cost. The motherboard is also equally overkill, just like the CPU and the GPU. It's a Asus ROG B650EI Strix. Just like the CPU, this was sent to me. Obviously, this wasn't sent to me by AMD. This was sent to me by Asus. So big shout out to Asus ROG for sending over this motherboard. It is a very fancy, fancy motherboard. I've talked countless times about the advantages and disadvantages of going with a fancy, expensive, high-end motherboard. But considering I want this rig to be as reliable and as feature-packed as possible, getting a fancy ROG motherboard seemed like a perfect fit. So thank you, ROG, for sending it over. Uh, there are a couple of very interesting features about this motherboard, but the biggest thing about this motherboard for me that really stood out to me and this won't be too applicable for everyone, is the headphone jack on the back. So Asus makes sound cards. I don't know if you know about that, but I don't think most people buy sound cards these days. But the sound card built onto this ROG motherboard is excellent. Like it's really, really, really quality. It's actually really good. I could tell a very noticeable difference between my headphones plugged in on the B650i's headphone jack versus, you know, a low-end entry-level motherboard that I came from, which I think was like a uh, entry-level ASRock B550M or B550i. And there was a notable difference my headphones sounded way better, louder, clearer, more detail, more impact in the bass. And this is probably because my headphones are very high impedance and require a lot of power. And this being a high-end gaming motherboard probably has a much better sound card, sound chip or a DAC in here. As for the other parts in the rig, I'm going to run it down quickly. So the power supply was sent to me by Cooler Master. Shout out to them. Uh, it's a V850 Gold SFX, which is one of the best power supplies you can get right now, I would say, for a SFX rig. The included modular cables are pretty good as well, but I would really like it if Cooler Master could include some braided cables with their power supply or at least have it as a optional accessory to buy on their website since SFX rigs are more than likely going to benefit greatly from having flexible and soft braided cables. As for storage, it's a simple one terabyte Lexar SSD. I don't even know if it has DRAM in it, but it gets the job done and it boots up fast enough. My plan is to upgrade this rig with another one terabyte SSD or another four terabyte SSD with the other PCIe slot in the back. But for now, one terabyte is enough since I'm only gaming and streaming on this. In the future though, if I'm trying to go full content creation on this rig, then I will definitely upgrade that SSD, which is why it's nice to have a high-end motherboard that has two slots. As for the cooling, it's a simple 240 millimeter all-in-one water cooler from Aftershock. It's from that old rig in which I pulled the 7900 XT. I say old as in 
like it was a few weeks ago. But yeah, it gets the job done, especially since the 7900 is not really a thermally inefficient CPU. It's it's hot, but it's not that hot. It's 88 watts spread over two CCDs. So the thermal properties of that chip is actually pretty efficient and pretty good. So the first thing with any PC build is definitely installing the CPU into the motherboard. And this is the first time I've actually installed a Ryzen 7000 CPU into the AM5 socket. So, you know, it's nice to see pins being moved to the motherboard. Whether it's a pro or a con, I can't really decide, but it's nice to see nevertheless. And honestly, it's a pretty straightforward process. It's basically identical to the LGA systems from Intel. You just lift up the retention arm, align the notches on the CPU to the notches on the motherboard, gently place the CPU into the motherboard, drop the cover down, close the retention arm, and you're done, you just call it a day. Installing the RAM is the same as RAM has always been, very straightforward. And considering I only have two slots for RAM here and only two sticks of RAM, I didn't have to worry about which slots to use first. Very, very easy. Installing the SSD is equally easy as well. There's this fancy heat sink contraption so that ASUS could fit a M.2 slot on top of VRM cooling, which I think is totally awesome. And it even comes with extra thermal pads for me to, you know, make sure that there is sufficient cooling for whatever SSD I'm using, which is always a nice touch. After that, it was time to install the motherboard into the case. And the NKS M1 is pretty straightforward to do that in since, well, it's one of the easiest cases as far as small form factor goes to build in. Align the motherboard, screw it in, and you're done. At this point, I would say it's a very good idea to install all the front panel connectors. So USB 3, USB C, USB Type A, front panel connectors connectors, HD audio, everything plugged in really, really simply. After which, the next step I would recommend you do is to install the power supply cables. Cable management is the hardest part in any small form vector rig, and I'm not going to say that I actually did it very well in this particular system, but I try my best. I installed the power supply cables onto the motherboard and onto the power supply and try to get them into like optimal positions for cable management and space management, upon which I then screwed in the power supply into the case, which was a straightforward task. Next thing that was on the to-do list was installing the GPU. And the GPU is really easy to install. It's a standard installation process. It's not like a sandwich style PC case in which you need to use a vertical bracket or any PCIe riser. It just goes straight in like a standard case. The 7900 XT is one of the best GPUs you can get for a small form factor rig because it's so damn tiny. There's more than enough space underneath here to put two more slim 120 millimeter fans to improve the airflow, which is awesome. And this GPU is so small that it actually makes the NK's M1 look a bit inefficient and wasteful with its space. And I feel like if I had more time to prepare for this rig, I could actually probably order a Velcase Velka 7 and probably get a 7 liter rig going if I was willing to sacrifice having a all-in-one water cooler. After all this is done, I did as much cable management as I could and then I installed the all-in-one water cooler, which is admittedly the most challenging part of building in the NKS M1, the AIO. I think the main reason is also the AIO being like a super long piped one like that I had to manage a lot of pipes with, but uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't actually all that hard. So I installed the fan and a radiator onto the radiator bracket first, upon which I then installed the all-in-one pump lock onto the motherboard after applying some uh, Thermal Knot Cryo Grizzly Thermal Paste. I decided to go with an intake system for the all-in-one water cooling radiator because I wanted to give it fresh air. Though in hindsight, it might have been a good idea to run it as exhaust so it could exhaust the hot air from the GPU out, especially since it's a gaming rig first and foremost and the priority should be cooling the GPU, not really the CPU. After all that is done, I was pretty much done with building in this case and the entire build was complete, which is actually surprisingly straightforward and well, a really nice, pleasant experience. It's it's not the best cable management job ever. It is my first time building in a very small form factor rig after all, but I'm still pretty proud with how it turned out. And at this point, you're probably wondering its performance and thermals. So let's talk about the performance. Well, it's very good. Playing Valorant, the 7900 gives me a consistent 400 FPS in basically every situation. And even when streaming using CPU and coding, which is the best quality thing ever, I still get a consistent 250 to 300 FPS, which is absolutely insane. The GPU also runs very very well and runs actually pretty cool especially with so much airflow to go around and it really only peaks at about 65 degrees celsius with the memory temp being about 90 degrees celsius after a few hours of streaming and gameplay using gpu and coding now do note i do play in an air conditioned room because it's comfortable to do that if you are in hot sweaty singapore it might be a good idea to open up your side panels for better airflow or maybe add more fans into the base of the case for better intake and maybe run the ai 
iOS and exhaust if you want to keep your side panels on and the temps as low as mine. As for the CPU, there's basically zero concerns since I'm basically using intake positive air pressure to cool the CPU with a 240 millimeter all-in-one water cooler. In fact, I can even PBO overclock it on auto settings and it still runs perfectly fine. In real world use though, despite using CPU encoding and streaming for a couple of hours, the temperatures of the CPU were still at most 65 or 70 degrees Celsius at peak. And that's not for all the cores, that's only for some of the cores. And that is generally pretty impressive to see. In conclusion then, should you build a rig like this? Well, if you're looking to build a small form factor PC right now with, you know, high performance parts, AMD is looking like a sweet option. The 7900 XT is only a two slot GPU, which means it's very small and fits in every single small form factor case ever. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And the non-X Ryzen 7000 chips seem to be very, very thermally efficient, which means very low cooling requirements. So you can use pro profile air coolers or small 120 millimeter all-in-one water coolers and still have great level of performance. I'm really happy with this rig, but it's still not the end game for me. I have a Lian Li Den A4 H2O, which is just sitting there ready to be built. And there will be an update to this SFX rig soon enough in that Lian Li case. Although really, I think the end game for me will be air cooling in a Vel case 7. I don't really know if I have money to buy one of those. And with that, I hope you guys found this video exciting or enjoyable. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.